Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my second part of my collection videos. And today we're going to be looking at all the long guns. So we did the short guns, we did all the pistols, the SMGs and one shotgun. And today we're going to be doing all of my long guns. So assault rifles, sniper rifles, DMRs, all that kind of thing. Remember guys, if you like the content, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you get the first warning of any new videos that are going on. And any questions you got, anything you want to say, leave a comment in the comment box below. I love reading all your comments. Uh, it's, it's great, it's really interesting. So keep them all coming and uh, I'll look forward to more. Okay guys, right. Now I've got stuff everywhere today because I've been trying to get ready for a, a game tomorrow and I was sorting out a new loadout that wasn't coming together. So I've got bits and pieces all over the place, including my helmet, which you've got to get out of the way. And we'll start on this look at my collection. So all the more long guns. And we're gonna start off with something pretty um, pretty um, precious to me because it was my first ever airsoft gun. Um, the first one that I actually bought after using higher guns when I first started out, way back in 2009. And it is oh, this thing. Now this is or was a GNG M4A1. Yes, that's right, an M4A1. And as you can see, it's not an M4A1 anymore. <laughs> it's actually anything but. Literally the only parts uh, that are left from the original gun are the gearbox shell and the outer barrel. Um, anything else? No. Nothing else from the original gun is left on this. It is completely changed. And this gun, it's stupidly good. It's ridiculously accurate. So what have I done to it over the years? Now, it's had several different forms, this gun. When I first got it, first of all, there was a bit of a, a fashion back in the sort of 2009 to 2014 times I think it was that everybody seemed to have a Magpul M4. Magpul was everything at the time and it got so prevalent that it actually became unfashionable to have Magpul and I, this used to have a Mo stock with the triangle style sights and a suppressor on it and it had the standard GNG M4 um, receiver top and bottom. Uh, it also had the uh, Mo grip and a what stock did it when I first actually for a time I had one of those short full stock that was horrible and then I changed it out for a, a standard uh, Mo type crane stock. Then that'll be a battery charged up for tomorrow. Then I changed it to a DMR style Magpul stock. So it was the UTG stock, I think it is, uh, with a special, it's got its own um, own uh, stock mount on there. It's got its own stock tube on there. And that was quite different again. And then I changed it again. And I put, got rid of all the Mo stuff, or took it all off, I've still got it somewhere. And I put this key mod rail on it. And this was just a cheap rail that I got from China. It cost me about 30 pounds. I sprayed it. Uh, I had to do a few modifications and fit it in. It's actually pretty solid. Now this thing is running a 601 Prometheus barrel. It's got a Macron, um, Maple Leaf Macron knob. It's got a Garda hop unit, one of the old style hop units. Um, it's a cast, but it's aluminium. It's running a Tokyo Marui high torque motor and that's pretty much, oh, I've changed it. It's got, um, let me think, Prometheus piston, piston head and uh, cylinder head. It's got a standard GNG tappet plate, but I have modified it. I've cut it down a little bit to make it return quicker. And that's roughly about it. I've just little tweaks here and there, polished the inside of the gearbox. It's got, oh, that was another thing. Yeah, it's got a poison apple cylinder. Um, so a few little bits and pieces. It actually fires really, really accurately. It's devastatingly accurate some, at some of the outdoor uh, woodland skirmishes I use it at. Um, it's, it's stupidly so. Uh, there was a 
sort of a, a team of guys all coming out. There was about 10 of them all with higher guns at the last Woodland match I played, which was a while ago. And this was so accurate, they couldn't actually get anywhere near us with their, with their higher guns and they were getting really frustrated and wound up by it. But yeah, what can I say? That's, that's the gun, it works really well. It is heavy, it's not great for CQB because it is reasonably long and it is pretty chunky. It is quite noisy, it does rattle a little bit, but that's mostly to do with the sling. And a few bits, oh yeah, yeah, the mag release, that's what rattles, and the actual bot release. So I think, yeah, it's still, we hold those down, it's pretty solid. As you can see, you can see the gearbox and the hop. Um, there wasn't actually space in there for a um, actual um, fake bolt, but that's just the way it goes. It's actually got a genuine Magpul armament, lower and upper receiver. I uh, don't know if you can still get those. And that is quite a cool piece of kit. And that's one of the reasons I won't get rid of this. It's got a genuine Magpul sling plate and mount, genuine Magpul, although it was is the airsoft version, uh, pistol grip, a blade trigger. It's fitted with a Titan MOSFET. And yeah, it's a bit of a mean beast, but the only problem is you need battery space for it. So I've got this big, ugly ASG stock on it. Um, I have thought about putting my other uh, PTS stock in it, but that's currently, that's currently, oh, you can see I've been swapping parts around. That's why it's fallen off. I've got more bits and pieces. I keep swapping scopes and four grips and things like that around. Um, but yeah, I, I was gonna put um, my PTS stock on it, but I decided better of it because I'm using it on my 416 at the moment. So let's get that back on because that's annoying me because it's falling around. There we go. And on top of that, we've just got a flashlight, a green flashlight, which is incredibly bright and everybody hates it. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Uh, we've got some Magpul style flip up sights. These aren't genuine, these are actually uh, Chinese fakes, but it works just fine. I usually run it with a uh, red dot or maybe a magnifier so yeah that is my g and g m4a1 as was but is actually a hybrid m4ar type frankenstein gun so to give you guys an idea what this thing actually sounds like how it runs so one thing with this stock is you can fit 10 batteries in there it's so big I do love this gun. So let's see what it sounds like. So this is in normal mode. And then if we put it into precock, it's really sharp. It sounds great. Full auto. Yeah, that's a cool gun. I do like that gun a lot. So Take it back out of precock to relax the spring. There you go. You can hardly tell it's in precock, it's so sharp. So, yeah, that is a really, really effective gun. Um, it's not fancy in the fact the way it looks, it looks well used. It's a bit battered now, and obviously, certain bits of it aren't functional like the bolt, uh, but you know what? It works, so I don't care. So the next gun in the collection that I bought, this is my next gun, and that was a GMP Masada. Now I know a lot of people are looking and going, no, 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 you mean A and K Masada, and I actually don't. This is the GMP version, which is basically based on the A and K, but with a GMP gearbox in it. And again, I think I bought this in 2010, so it's getting a bit long in the tooth. It's always been a fantastic gun. It's been so good and so accurate for many years before the likes of uh, fancy hot bookings came out, like the Maple Leaf and all the rest of them. Um, I used to just you run standard Garda um, silicon hot rubbers in this, and it was stupidly accurate. And it was so good that I struggled not to use it. So this gun has had a lot of use over the years. It really has. But it's running a completely standard gearbox. Um, except for the addition of a Titan gate MOSFET. Uh, that's the only thing I've put in it. The barrel, did I upgrade it? I don't think I did. No, it's got the standard barrel in it still. 
they've still got the standard barrel. The one thing I did eventually do was put a Airsoft Pro um, hop-up unit in it because the standard one's plastic and I, they're very hard to get hold of when you need them. So I thought, you know what, take the chance to upgrade it when you can. So I grabbed the Airsoft Pro hop-up unit. It had already got a stainless steel nozzle so I didn't need to touch that. So that's all I've done. I've literally put this in and a um, Titan gate MOSFET. It did run a different MOSFET to start with, um, but when the Titans came out, I couldn't resist it. So yeah, this thing's absolutely fantastic and it's been so good. And it's a funny one because I, these days I don't use it as much as I used to, um, but it is still so good. And you've got your extendable stock, and it's just a nice gun. The only thing I don't like about it is then you release the actual um, bolt. Because when you do that, you push it down on there, you'll see that your magazine button pops out for some bizarre reason. So if you have a loose fitting mag in there and you open it up, you adjust your hop, drop it down and your mag drops out, which is really annoying, especially in the middle of a game. To give you an idea what it looks like with a mag though, we need to put one in because without it, it looks a bit odd. I think as soon as you put a magazine in, suddenly it all works and you stick a scope or a, a red dot on there and it looks really cool. It's such a nice gun. Oh, that was the other thing. I put this, uh, this different trigger in as well, just to make it look a bit funkier. Again, we'll stick a battery in it just so you can hear what it sounds like. This is actually front wired. The battery goes in the handguard. Uh, not much in the way of rail space. You've got these little M-lock slots in there for you to fit uh, whatever you want. So I just stick a rail on there for a flashlight and one on the bottom for a, a foregrip. I ran a, an AFG on it for a long time and then this came with one of the Spectner arms. So I'll put it on here just to see what it was like. And it feels pretty nice so I've, I've kept it on there. But now this is a really nice gun, I love it. So it is starting to get a bit loose and a bit slack in places. So I could probably do with tightening a few bits up or making a couple of custom bits for it. But if we take it apart, this nice Noveski uh, enhancer on the front, sound enhancer. So yeah, it's a really difficult, well, it was a gun that was in short supply when it first came out. But uh, I'm glad I got that. And one thing I do like about this, I've got a quick change barrel. Now you can get, a, there's like a U-hook that fits on there. I've taken it off to give me a bit, bit more battery space. What you do is you're pressing this little button down here, turn this and the whole barrel and hop assembly pulls out. So you've got a genuine quick change barrel. And I think it's the same as many of the Masadas or ACRs that are knocking about now. But this was sort of one of the early ones that did it. The first were the A and Ks though. And then this sort of followed along afterwards. So again, same as before, 7.4 battery. And we'll try it out. As you can see, it's really quiet. If we go to pre-cock. Yeah, it's a great gun this is. I've done a couple of little bits to the external and made the indentations for the fire selector a bit deeper because they're a bit shallow and it can wobble around a bit. So I've made those deeper so it's more positive click. And that's about it really. I've not really done much more to it. It's such a good gun. There's not much else you need to do. So I've still got the original Magpul sort of branding on there. It was a genuine Magpul branding from GMP. Uh, I'm not sure how, it didn't seem to last very long. Obviously Magpul are out of the airsoft market these days, but it worked. And that is the Magpul Masada, not to be mistaken with the ACR. Okay, so next up, I decided I wanted a DMR. And at the time, the best choice was, well, best choice for me, should I say, was actually the GMP M14 DMR with a proper licensed Knight's Armament rail and a, a Leopold uh, scope. So, this I picked up, I actually ordered it from, uh, direct from Hong Kong. And actually, no, I think I actually got it from Japan, of all places. So it came over quite low powered. 
uh, stuck a heavier spring in and it's been amazing again it's another gun that I've not really had to do a great deal to but then I haven't used it a lot either um, simply because it is long very long and quite heavy and recently I've had it apart I've had a look at the internals and I've sort of been planning to give it a little bit of an upgrade but all in all it's actually a really really nice replica and part of the reason for that is typical GMP build GMP I mean they're, they're getting a bit long in the tooth with some things these days but um, back in the day they were pretty much guaranteed quality and there's a lot of parts on this I like from the such as the what should I say Knight's Armament Rail license it's got the US rifle 7.62 M14 Springfield Armoury on the back along with its own um, serial number this is actually locked to um, semi-auto only for me because of the power coming out of it it's about roughly about 400 feet per second um, but yeah this is a fantastic gun it's really really nice I actually run it with a gate warfet uh, MOSFET in the stock I uh, run it off 7.4 volt LiPo batteries I used to run it off uh, NIM batteries many years ago with a, a Dean's connector on there because it's got huge space in the stock for it but now I just run it with a, a small 7.4 LiPo battery and the stock's actually full of foam to stop it uh, reverberating when you fire because you sometimes you used to get this like this vibration through it's got the classic M14 charging handle and like I said really nice scope this scope that's the second battery charge it's got this really nice um, Leopold scope uh, it's actually it's a lovely scope this is really really good quality and I really like that and it's probably got the proper um, clickers without having to use a screwdriver you can just use a finger uh, clickers for your windage and elevation so that's really nice and you've also got your zoom on here as well so yeah a real tight good quality scope and yeah this gun's great I would give it a, a firing test for you to listen to it but it takes forever to get to the battery compartment and plug it in so <laughs> I haven't got enough time for it at the moment but uh, yeah I, I actually really like this gun I'm going to do some more work to this I painted the stock uh, it came in OD green originally but it does have a slightly plasticky look to it the stock is painted actually from standard, but um, yeah, it, it wasn't the greatest finish, but they never are on these types of stocks, I don't think. Um, the only other bits, I managed to break the um, the actual trigger guard one, so I've replaced it with the one off my EBR, which I use as spares now. And uh, yeah, it's got a, a maple leaf, maple leaf uh, Macron, I think it's 70 degree uh, bucking in there. So yeah, it's not bad with the heavier BBs. Prefers it to be a little bit warmer than colder though, uh, because of that hop is probably better off with a 60 degree. But yeah, there you go. It actually came standard with a type ball barrel, which was nice. So yeah, this is a great gun. I may do some videos on this in the future when I start messing with it again, um, because M14s are a pig to work on because it takes forever to strip them down. But yeah, if you guys want to see some more of this rifle in the future and I start doing a few modifications to it and perhaps tweaking a bit more it seemed sacrilege to start with from messing with it because it was such a nice gun originally but now it's a bit long in the tooth I bought this in probably 2012 so yeah it's uh, it's due a bit of TLC the gearbox itself is maintained I've always done that and made sure it's all greased and uh, working well but I just think it might be time for a few upgrade parts just to bring it up to the uh, modern day standards of some of the guns that are around now okay so after having a go at the DMR route, I decided I wanted to do a bit of sniping. And I got hold of this thing because it was pretty cheap and it, it looked quite cool, I thought. And it, what can I say about this thing? <laughs> the build quality of these is awful, if I'm honest. But you can do something about it if you're reasonably handy with uh, making your own parts and customising parts. Anyone who's bought one of these as standard will know that the barrels in them flop around like crazy things uh, it's a free floating barrel and that's what it was sort of advertised as having this amazing free floating barrel when they talk about floating they weren't kidding because it literally ro rocked from side to side the rails were all screwed directly into the plastic without any mounting system so any slight bit of force and they broke off 
Uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very good if I'm honest. So first of all, I went to town on it. So I made my own barrel nut on my lathe. I machined it and set it up so it fitted inside, locked onto the barrel, and then the bolts locked onto the actual nut through the rail. And as a result of that, you've got the most solid barrel in the history of barrels. So that thing doesn't go anywhere. Um, but that wasn't the end of it. I had to put my own mounting plates on the back of the rails so they actually bolted onto the the sort of fake M lock a bit better. Um, I put all new trigger box in there, 90 degree sears from Airsoft Pro, Airsoft Pro cylinder, piston, nozzle. Um, I've put a maple leaf, um, what did I put in there? Maple leaf barrel and hop up unit. And I had to replace the stock with a, unfortunately a bright green one because the original one cracked. And uh, so I had to do a few modifications myself and then I painted it as well, obviously in the camo colors. And it's actually incredibly consistent. It chronos at um, 492 FPS plus or minus about two FPS. It's stupidly consistent for such a cheap gun. Um, the bolt, bolt pull on it is pretty stiff. Um, the magazines feed when they want to. The feeding issues are quite bad. I've modified and modified the magazines on these to try and make them feed better. Um, I've actually got to the point now where I've got rid of the um, the actual clip on the front of the magazine. I've filed out an indent in the top there with my Dremel uh, to try and get the BB to sit higher so when the blade comes along it lifts them out a bit better. And they do feed now, but it's so much work to try and get something to feed that should work out the factory. Uh, the only issue now is the scope's actually wobbly because the top rail is starting to come away as the actual metal of the receiver uh, is just so poor. And I need to put helicoils in there to hold it in place. But the reality is I don't really use it that much. It's so heavy as well. It is, the sad thing is, it's actually quite accurate now. It does, it pushes out a hell of a long way. It really does reach out a long way. But the accuracy could be more consistent. Um, but it's actually pretty good really for what it is you can't complain but the weight of it really does put you off it weighs a ton and you don't want to be carrying it very long and the bolt pull is a bit of a killer well, actually no it's not as bad as i remember but yeah it's not the quietest thing around actually it's pretty smooth <laughs> it must have got better with old age yeah that's actually pretty good yeah that's okay one thing that i did do the stock wobbles around uh, it's a folding stock, uh, it does tend to wibble around a bit when it uh, comes out of the box. So I made this adjuster on the top, so you, you basically screw it out. And it, what it does, it locks the stock in place, so I can actually fold it. If I want to stick it in a gun bag, it's not for carrying around like that. But I stand it, it sort of rattled a bit, so I put this thing on the top, made this, and screws into the, the top of the stock. Just holds it in place so it doesn't move around anymore, so it keeps it solid. Because you'd catch it on things and it'd hop up and suddenly the stock would swing around. So if you climb through a window or you know over a fence or something. So I put some of this grip tape on the front to make it easy to hold on to, because it could be quite, if it got wet, it was quite slippery. So yeah, it actually made some decent progress with this gun. It actually shoots pretty well, but um, it's not very practical, I think. With the bipod off, it's a bit lighter, but it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. But no, all in all, it's pretty good. The scope's great. Um, the Rhino scope, and it's um, nothing special, but no, it's a nice, nice scope, and it, it's got a long, uh, long range on the zoom for it, which isn't much use for gameplay, but it's good when you're trying to set up your, your gun to make sure it's firing straight and seeing where those BBs are going. So with this, you use 0.45s. Nothing lighter. It doesn't like it. It's got to be heavy BBs. So yeah, that is my well MB 44411D, I think it is. So what I would say to anyone, unless you're planning on seriously customizing and spending a lot of time fettling it, don't buy one because they're really not worth even the 110 pounds that they are. The amount of time and money you've got to put into them, realistically, they're not worth it. And it might be worth getting another similar kind of platform that I can put all of the internal upgrades I've got in this into something else because I'm sure there are better guns out there.
So next up, this is a GNG L85 AFV, which stands for Armoured Fighting Vehicle, which is basically the shortened version for tank crews and people in, in vehicles and whatnot. This is great. Um, it does suffer from the usual semi-auto lockups that you get with all of the L85s. Um, I have got a MOSFET in there. It can be uh, sorted, that problem, but I haven't had time to get around and actually do anything about it. But in all honesty, it works really well. As usual, it's got Macron, um, Macron uh, booking in there with a, an Omega nub. And, oh yeah, and I also put a um, Prowin hop-up chamber in there. And I did that uh, just to make it a little bit easier because it had the, the user GNG plastic one to start with. And these are just a bit nicer. You can find your position a bit easier. And other than that, it's uh, fairly standard. It has got a MOSFET in there. It's a fairly standard MOSFET. I've had knocking around for many years. It went on one of my other guns I had. Then when I, whatever I did with that gun, I can't remember. I took MOSFET out and kept it. And then I put it in this. And it's really good. It's actually a very basic MOSFET just with active braking. And uh, it works incredibly well. This gun has to run on 11.1. It doesn't like 7.4s for some reason. Uh, it may be that the gearbox needs uh, some attention to make it a little bit free flowing. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But um, yeah, it certainly doesn't like uh, 7.4. But with 11.1, it runs perfectly. Um, it looks good. It's got its magazine in, always looks better. You've got to give it a good whack to get it in. There you go. It's got the funny mag release on the side. It's got the replica sues that site that does work and it's got the illuminating triangular post on it nice foregrip comes with it the scope comes with it as well and it's a lovely gun this is i really really love it and it's really accurate as well uh, i actually used it for cqb uh, mostly because of its length but when you do use it in cqb and you get a couple of long engagements it fires straight as a die really really good so i'd actually recommend these to, to anyone who wants a, a British loadout, whether they want to run this or they want to run the longer version. Um, I think this is really nice. I wouldn't mind getting hold of another one of these and doing, getting one of the new uh, rails that are coming out from uh, Angry Gun to make the new version of it, because I think it looks really cool and it works really well. So this is this is actually one of my favorite guns, I think, just because it looks so authentic. It's got proper pressed steel outer, it's got this nice Suzat on there and it just feels solid. There's no creaks or rattles. It's, it's really solid gun. It just feels nice to shoulder and to use. It is actually one of my favorite guns. So, uh, oh, that was the only thing that fell. The actual pin fell out of the magazine cap, so I had to put a, a split pin in there. But other than that, yeah, I actually really like this gun. And uh, I don't get to use it as much as I'd like, actually. Uh, mostly because when I'm in CQB, I try to avoid that semi-auto lockup because it is quite annoying but um, if you're out in woodland yeah absolutely faultless you use a semi-auto or or the full auto if you're using semi-auto and it locks up you just give it a quick burst the full auto and it's all clear but um, yeah it's, it's a shame though but you can sort it there is a fix for it and I just haven't got around to doing it and it's something I've got to do so the guns I just showed you are the guns I used for a long time. Uh, for, for years and years I used the same guns. Uh, I didn't really change around that much because I spent most of my time modifying the guns I'd got rather than buying new. And um, hence the, the M4 changing so much my first gun. And then came a change because I thought I'll oh, fancy something new. And that came about in the shape of the gun that basically started this channel and that was the Spectre Arms 416 we have here and this has turned into very much an everyday gun so if you've watched my channel any of my videos this gun will be no stranger to you because it's featured in quite a number of my videos simply because I've been doing trying to find whether the Spectre Arms were with good value for money and that was what sort of kick started this channel was to say well are the cheap guns really worth it and this gun as it stands has evolved shall we say uh, from a standard AEG I then went through the process of upgrading it like I do with a lot of my guns and uh, fettling it and doing little bits and pieces to it and it's gradually progressed it's gone from having a normal MOSFET to a gate Titan and 
um, type ball barrel, different hop unit. Um, as you can see, I got Pro Win, different bits and pieces in there. Um, tried different hop rubbers, polished the gearbox, different motor. It's got a ZCI motor in there at the moment. So, and it's, it's gradually evolved and it's turned into what it is now. And it's actually a really capable gun. This is a surprisingly good gun. Um, started life as a, as a 200 pound Spectner Arms, but it's gradually progressed into quite a, a beast. And anyone who tends to come across it on a game day sort of says, what the hell is that? Where did you get it from? And I have to explain to them that it's actually not a standard gun and you can't sort of buy it like this straight out of the box. And it is a crazy thing and it is loud. It's crazy loud, mostly because of the internals I'm running. So I've got an aluminium piston head in there and um, I don't run sorbethane pads or anything like that. So it's not the most subtle of guns. But it does perform it's very very consistent um, the FPS is spot on and it fires deadly straight so you can't really ask for more um, I'm always trying to find something to better it and to pitch it against but it, it does perform at the end of the day and it seems to be getting better with age as well the more I mess with it the longer I have it the better it seems to perform I took it out the other day uh, just for a test fire and it never ceases to surprise me so yes, yeah, this, this thing is solid as well. I mean, there's no wobbles, no rattles. It's it's absolutely solid. You can't can't fault it for that. The Spectre Arms really nailed it with this. I actually think it's better quality, build-wise, than the Edge. Obviously, the internals I'm not so sure about. Um, obviously, I've upgraded them, but the external build quality is better than the Edge range. So even the newer guns. So I'm quite impressed with this. Um, let's give it a shot so you can hear it. You have heard it before. You watch my other videos, but it's always good to hear it again. You hear a bleep, so gate tighten again. So with a normal shot and with the pre-cock. Yeah, it's not subtle. It's really loud, but it's good, it works. Uh, the only things I've changed on the externals are I changed the flash hider, uh, that's actually a Nuprof flash hider, it allows me to fit a silencer, which does take the edge off the uh, sound a little bit, it does give it less of a crack at the uh, business end, but um, other than that it's mostly for show, but no, it, it does work a little bit, the suppressor, and I've got one of these um, Night Evolution uh, buttons on the side of the pressure pads with the switch as well if I want the flashlight on permanently. This thing's just a beast, in all honesty. And to prove it, I'm taking it with me tomorrow. Um, I'll be using it tomorrow, possibly. I'm actually going to run my TM MP7 tomorrow, but with a tracer unit. But this, yeah, it, it is a really good gun. And I can't really fault it. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a workhorse. Um, I love my classic style 416. So next up, is back to the snipers. I do like sniping, it has to be said. And this gun has featured previously, and it is the ASO2. Now I did a video on this, and it was simply an unboxing video. And since then I've upgraded it and done quite a bit of work to it. So it's, it's completely changed in all honesty. Um, I am thinking about doing a paint job on it, but I can't decide every time I think I'm gonna do it, I then don't do it. So let me know guys, should I paint this gun? Because I think it would look pretty cool. I just haven't brought myself to do it. So what have I done? This gun has had a Crazy Jet in a barrel. It's had a Army Armament hop unit with Maple Leaf bucking. It's had a uh, upgrade cylinder from Ares. And this is the machined stainless steel one without the pins in the end, uh, along with the piston and the bear, uh, spring guide and spring. Uh, what else have we done? We've put a, a different blade trigger in there and we've put the optional stock on the end uh, with the extendable butt stock or butt pad. That's not necessarily for show, that's actually because I've got really long arms so it helps me a little bit and also the, the cheek riser. And then after that I've put a, a silencer on the end. Got an adapter, put a silencer on, and it works a treat. Uh, scope I've had for a while for different guns, and then I've got my mount on here for mounting my uh, scope camera. So yeah, that's it. 
and it's a bit of a beast this is it fires at just under 500 feet per second all day long um, I've done my own modifications in here to try and make sure that the cylinder is straight with the hop chamber so you can actually see the hop chamber in there uh, if the light can pick it up it's blue hop cha chamber and there's some issues with people's nozzles rubbing against the inside of there and mine was doing the same and I can see where it was rubbing originally it was just knocking a little bit of the anodizing off and I thought well that's not great I don't like that and it was it went with a distinctive clunk every time you, you pushed it into the into the hop unit into the receiver whereas now it doesn't it actually goes in nice and smooth you can just do it with your thumb before it sort of go down to sort of there and they go clunk um, whereas now it just goes in nice and smooth two fingers you haven't got to mess with it and it sounds good it's a nice really nice sniper rifle this is um, I absolutely love it uh, the trigger pulls okay on it it's a bit spongy um, if you have a look at it so it's difficult to find the brake because it's not really a two-stage trigger it's and it's not really a, a single stage trigger it's a, just a bit in between it's a little bit spongy but other than that no problems and unlike my other sniper rifle no feeding issues it goes straight in works really well this is a great sniper rifle and it's great it's really really good um, I just have to watch the FPS doesn't creep on it I've taken the indicator off the, out of there so it doesn't break uh, made a few mods to the actual trigger box so we can actually work on it a bit easier take the bolt out without having to stick screwdrivers and things in so we've done sort of typical modifications we've got the top dead center wheel on there to adjust the hop up to make it a bit easier because the old one needed an allen key whereas with this you just turn the wheel and you, you get what you need so this gun is one of my again one of my favorites i really really like this um and i'll be pitching this against the uh the new Novridge SSG 10 and it's uh, when it arrives it is actually making its way to us at the moment so that'll be interesting so now this is my ASO2 my beloved ASO2 and I'm always thinking about things to do to this and to to mess with it and to give it a bit of a a makeover every now and again not that it really needs it but it's just such a great gun I just can't help but mess with it so next up another gun that's no stranger to the channel and that's the Spectner Arms Edge um, E07 I think it was I can't remember the right name for it um, the TAN M4 in other words this gun uh, was bought to pitch against the 416 upgraded and see if how well the standard gun could compete against it and it did pretty well to be fair it did only just missed out on the win compared to the 416 in reality uh, day to a use yeah the 416 is better when you start playing games with it and take it out and using it over a, a long period of time you start to see slight more slight more uh, discrepancies between the two with consistency and things like that this is by no means a bad gun though I have heard of people having trouble and a few people have commented on my channel about them having trouble with the um, Orion gearbox in these personally myself I haven't at this stage had any problems with my gearbox so whether they resolve the issues that people are having or not i don't know but personally i've not had an issue the only thing that's happened to me is the grub screws came a little bit loose i had to retighten them on the rail and also what else happened to it oh i had a couple of feeding problems recently uh, nothing too bad uh, with the actual hop unit um, it wasn't feeding flawlessly and i'd swap out a magnet and it'd be fine again and I've heard again of that happening to other people. I think that may be solved by swapping out the hop units, which is something I've not done yet. I haven't used this for a while. So um, it's something I may look at in the future, perhaps stick a pro in or something like that in, or even go crazy and put a, a max hop unit in it and see how it performs. And uh, yeah, I think I've got a few ideas for this that might be fun, uh, but nothing concrete at the moment because there's lots of other things lots of other projects to do but all in all a solid gun and anyone who buys these they shouldn't be disappointed you can't you can't hate the Spectre arms they, they make a good job of their guns um, but uh, if I'd say anything negative about Spectre arms is they rely a lot on their connections with gate uh, they're putting Astas and Titans in their guns which are a fantastic piece of kit but sometimes, you know, a bit of variation, a bit of innovation would be nice and uh, see what they can do. But all in all, I am a Spectre Arms fan. I think they make fantastic 
value guns really high quality for the price that you pay for them and you can't really argue with that but like i say i would like to see something new from them soon rather than just a more m4s being rattled out in different guises with different mosfets in them uh, it'd be nice to see something different i know they are bringing some ak's out which could be interesting uh, but they've got to compete against some pretty pretty well established companies with their ak's but yeah that is the uh, spectra arms e07 i think it <laughs> i can't even remember now it's the edge and it's the 07 version of it and uh, in tan so yeah it's a nice gun okay another gun that has been on the channel recently and that is the uh, slr branded ak105 from ditac now this gun <laughs> i've got sort of mixed feelings about this one i got it um it's a great externals it's really nice internals are not as special so yeah this gun has turned into a bit of a test bed um it's currently running uh okay, mosfet in there this is uh what is it i can't even remember which one it is it's not the warfet it's the other one the murph there it is and that one i've got i swap it between a couple of guns actually it's quite good because it's on these plugs you can just unplug it and stick it in a different gun so i've got a couple of guns wired up to use this now this has turned to a bit of a test bed like i say so at the moment i've put this um pro in chamber in there and i had to modify it to fit it so i had to put it on my milling machine just change a few bits on it and what i'm actually using in this at the moment is i've put a tnt type ball barrel in it with a tnt hop and tnt bucking and i'm doing a few experiments with it to see what it's like compared to the maple leaf stuff and so far i've been really really impressed uh, to the point i actually got my girlfriend to come and look at it earlier on to sort of show her how good it was and this ak i actually really love it i've run it on 11.1 now uh, with this mosfet i've rewired it uh, i've done a bit of maintenance to the gearbox nothing special just polished it like i did with my dmr project with the um with the um, svu so we've done a bit of a polish job and and just uh, setting up with the inside the gearbox giving it a bit of once over i've put a different uh, i've put a, a actual silent piston head in it and a silent cylinder head to match it just to make it sound a bit smoother and it's actually really nice and it's firing dead straight in fact i was going to use it tomorrow the only reason i decided not to is because i can't get me load out right okay guys so it turns out my camera died so i finished this video and then realized it wasn't recording from this point onwards oh, how i laughed anyway back onto ak i put a mag in it now because i think it looks better with a magazine in uh ak's without a mag look a bit weird oh and i've, I've stolen the light off because i used it at the weekend uh when i was playing yesterday so yeah back to what i've been doing with this I've actually got this TNT tight wall barrel in H and the actual matching knob and uh, hot rubber. And it's really interesting. I can't wait to do more with it. But this is going to be my sort of standard um, up for assault rifle, if you like. And it's, it's really, really nice. It's really good. It's working a treat. What I will do is I'll stick the 11.1 battery in there to let you have a listen to it so you can hear exactly what it looks like now. Hear exactly what it looks like. I do realise I just said hear exactly what it looks like. So now I'll show you exactly what it sounds like. Or let you listen to what it sounds like. You know what, I'm just going to stop talking. It's been a long day. So this is the Murph um, MOSFET. It's a 11.1 battery. Uh, it does fit in there. You can get two sticks down the tube and one up this way, so it fits quite nicely. And this is how it sounds. That sounded pretty sweet, actually. Um, what I have done, I've got a silent uh, cylinder head and silent piston in there as well. And that's with the standard motor. I think if you put a like a high torque motor or something in there, you could get this thing sounding pretty. Pretty sick. 
pretty snappy. So yeah, so far, so good. And if you are that way inclined, and <laughs> very often I am, you can actually get gate tightness for these as well, uh, which would be even more fun. So I reckon you can make this quite cool. I know not everyone loves gate tightness. I personally think they're like God's own MOSFET, but there you go. So yeah, this is my AK-105, and this is one of my one of my uh, current ongoing projects that I like playing with and I can see me messing with quite a lot and I do like the solid build of the externals but I've, I go through phases sometimes it's all about the M4 sometimes it's all about something strange and sometimes it's all about an AK and at the moment I'm loving AKs so there you go well having said that after yesterday I'm absolutely loving my MP7 because it was spot on so next up another gun that is certainly no stranger to this channel and that is a very recent one the SVU now I can't really talk about this for very long because it's had a lot of exposure on the channel recently but I am loving my SVU so what can I say that hasn't been said already if you want to know more about this gun you need to watch my other two videos I've got one unboxing and that we sort of look at it and then we start the uh, DMR process or I think I did an unboxing and then two DMR videos so if you want to know sort of extensively what goes into this then please watch those because they'll give you all the information you should need um, but yeah I this is a cool gun and I'm going to do more with it so I'm going to do a lot more with it and after my test with the uh, the actual uh, TNT barrel and bucking I'm sort of considering having a go with this maybe so uh, but first I want to get into a game because the problem is it's brand new bucking brand new barrel everything's new in it uh, I know it didn't change much in the gearbox or anything really in the gearbox but you don't need to and with this I think you, you, I need to play a few games with this to see exactly how it's performing because it does take a time for a gun to bed in properly so you need to be careful. Sometimes you can put all new bits in take for one shot and go, no, I could do better than that and take it apart again. And it's not really telling the whole story. My MP7 took a good few hours to bed in yesterday and then suddenly it found its feet and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I see where this thing's coming from. Because at the start of the game, I was like, yeah, it's all right. Does the job. But it's true of every airsoft gun. You can't go out and expect it to be perfect first time. You've got to use them for it, let them bed in. And I've got to do the same for this. So I've not been able to play with this since I did the DMR builds, but here it is. This is my AG. Is it AG? No, it's not. It's something else. ASP. ASP, although it's an AG, SVU build by Zyma. Yeah, basically who builds them who built them and with the PSO1 which is pretty cool yeah I'm going to use PSO1 you can get an adapter to fit something else on there a different type of scope of your own choice but you know there it is that is my SVU I'm not going to say any more about it and last but not least is the beast itself if you watch my videos you should remember this one it's a pretty recent one from just before Christmas I'm going to have to get it out aren't I I'll be back in about half an hour. So it takes out so long it is to take to set the thing up. And here it is. Mark 46 but let's face it it's just too big to get on camera so here it is once again the Tokyo Marie or TM Mark 46 and this thing I haven't even used it yet it's still got the, the hop up <laughs> label on the, the trigger and I haven't even had a chance to, to get out and use it the last couple of games I've played have been CQB or single shot so this is a bit of a no go and you don't really want to be running around CQB field with Mark 46. In fact, you don't want to be running anywhere with Mark 46 because it's so heavy, unless you're some kind of ripped athlete, in which case, fair enough. But every time I look at this gun, I find something new, a new detail, a new little bits and pieces that on there. I found a new marking on the other side of here the other day, um, little details. Even with the bipod, I found a new detail with the spring, the way the, the 
legs extend on it. There's always something new on this thing. And yeah, it's expensive, but it's so detailed. I mean, there's even little gradients on the back here for you just in the windage on your iron sights and stuff that is of no use for a you know normal airsoft uh, match, but it's just such good. It's just so well made. It's just immaculate. It's really, really nice. And I can see uh, when I first saw how much it was, I was like, really, how can you possibly, you know, have, a, have an airsoft gun that expensive for, for something so you so niche as a as a LMG, but I can really see where the money's gone into this thing. There's so much detail, it's ludicrous. And then obviously you've got your charging handle and your realistic operation, your bullets moving. It's just such a nice gun. It's just insane, it really is. And I never get bored of messing about with it. Everything about this gun just screams quality. And it's just, I can't say anything more about it than I have already. I almost don't want to use it, it's so nice because <laughs> I don't want to get it out and filthy and wreck it, but I will do uh, once I'm over the honeymoon period. I'll get out and start using it because that's what I do with everything I have. Everything's built for using, not for sticking in a case and looking at. So it doesn't matter whether it's motorbikes or watches or whatever it is, I tend to get out and start using them. So it will be used shortly and I'll, I'll put it through its pace and it'll probably get dirty and scratched at some point, but it's just so nice to look at and so, so cool to play around with. And the other day I shot a target in the garden just because it's fun to with this. It's just a fun thing to use. Um, on my first game day with it, I will no doubt break my spine trying to carry it, wear my arms out, and generally feel pretty rough at the end trying to carry it around, hence the big fat sling. But uh, yeah, even the other day, I walked downstairs with it slap, slung around my neck and said to my girlfriend, does it suit me? And she went, yeah, I suppose so. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool piece of kit this is, and I, I can't wait to use it. I'll probably take the actual bipod off to use it though, because I reckon that's just adding to the heft of the weight. But yeah, I love this thing. It's, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It just makes me smile every time I pick it up and, and play around with it. And it's so solid. There's just no no movement or rattles from it. Tokyo Marie, you gotta, whether you love them or hate them, I know there's a lot of people who don't like Tokyo Marie, but they nailed this thing.
Okay, everyone, so that is my current Airsoft collection, if you like. Um, and it's, you know, not the biggest collection in the world compared to some, but they're all choice guns. They're not sort of things that are given for me to try out. They're guns that I wanted to own and I bought myself for my own money. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit of a personal choice as far as all my guns are concerned. One's missing from my collection that I'd like to see, something like a TM Scar or maybe a Mark 18, Mod 1, something like that. Um, because I am intrigued to get my hands on uh, Tokyo Maru to see if they're, or at least the, the short guns, to see if they're as good as everyone says they are and if they can live up and do a proper comparison test. Next up for the collection though is the SSG 10 from Novridge. It should be on its way very soon, it is ordered. And I'm just waiting for it to be confirmed as posted. I haven't heard anything yet, but fingers crossed it'll be here soon. And we can do a proper unboxing and first impressions of that, and maybe get it up against my AS02 and see exactly how it compares. So that'll be really interesting. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. And it's gonna be a fun gun to try out. So I'm really looking forward to that. And also, Novridge commented on the uh, teaser video to sort of say whether we should review it or not. So I think it stands at around 28 to 6 in favour of reviewing it. So we're going to do it. So stay tuned, guys. There's plenty more content coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Stick with us. Remember to like or thumbs up, subscribe, and tell me which is your favourite gun out of my collection. Let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you again soon.